Hey folks, this is Steve from M4 LED, working on an enclosed trailer project, putting in some uh, LED lighting inside and out. Uh, the main lights, it's a newer trailer already LED, but uh, it's going to have some porch lights, some backup lights, or loading lights, and also some uh, light fixtures inside. Uh, some of the products that are going to be used are the panel lights, our 18 inch panel lights. Also have 26, but I uh, a little bit low on stock on 26 right now and 18 is going to do the job. Uh, there is a production run right now of the 26, so I'll have those in stock soon. But I figured I would use some of the 18s for that reason. Uh, some trailers have a landing strip down the middle of plywood to screw things onto. This particular trailer does not. Uh, so instead I made some aluminum brackets to go and span between the 24 inch on the center cross members and I'm mounting them like this. So that's one with the end caps on. I'm going to show you one with the end caps off. Basically it just screws up into the angle and then the angle just self tapping screws into the beam. I'm running four of these in this trailer. It should be more than enough light. You can always add more if necessary. Uh, the benefit of doing spread lights like this is that you get less shadowing if you're working on stuff. If you do the single row in the middle, you will get more shadowing left and right if you're working on things, or if you have a side-by-side -side like this one in case, uh, it's just getting at the middle of the roof. Whereas this one's gonna be spread out and you're gonna get light both directions come around this way and there will be two lights up there same thing this one did have a stock small led we're going to retain that in its original location just as an emergency backup light some of the other things that are going to go on to this trailer are those backup or docking lights these are the angled aluminum lights that we do those are going to go right into the back ramp door out the or above the ramp door out towards the back of the trailer and then a longer one as a uh, porch light on the side of the trailer now this is going into the aluminum skin so there are going to have to be some steps to deal with that i still need to figure out on spacing it so it's secured and doesn't crush the skin uh, one other thing i like using in an enclosed trailer are just mechanical timers these are 110 volt timers, but they work as long as they're mechanical, fine with 12 volts. Uh, I have had more than one instance with a standard switch where I accidentally left the switch on and killed the battery. What I do like to do is to run a uh, onboard battery in the trailer, and then this one will also get solar. So the trailer can run totally independent from uh, truck if it's disconnected and then this one I'm also going to put in a diode so it will still charge off the truck and then also those docking lights through a diode will also come on with the reverse lights of the truck or RV that's going to tow it. This is not a step-by-step how-to video this is just a summary of the project. Just to show you what we're dealing with with the trailer it's a 16 foot by seven and a half it's a V-nose and picked it up from auction from South uh, Land. It's an original new one, but uh, it's much smaller than what we've had before. Uh, with, it's big enough for a side-by-side -side and a motorcycle or a couple street bikes. These angled aluminum lights are going to go up there above the door, one on either side. And the larger porch light is going to go probably right about there option is over the door but again you get the bugs and stuff sometimes so LED has less bugs it's more about the heat but these will produce a little bit of heat uh, so somewhere behind the door to show you what we've done inside the trailer and there's still work in progress but it's e-tracked for uh, side by side for a XP four seater so that the front tires will drop right into those chocks the rear tires will drop right into those chocks and then also it has uh, for like a street bike or something like that wheel chocks when you don't have the side by side and they flip up into position and you use the tie downs on the e-track it's 
going to get most of the accessories and, and uh, some billet holders and things up in the front of the trailer where it's accessible when the car's in the back. All right, a little bit more information on the switch. Uh, there's the original light, which only has an onboard switch on it. What I'm gonna do is put a box in here for three timers. Uh, a little bit hard to see the light in here. Let me get over here. Uh, three timers, so there will be one for the interior lights. They also have individual switches if we don't need all four on. Uh, there will be a timer for the porch light outside, and then there will be a timer for the rear docking lights. And like I said, they, that will also be bypassed with the diodes so they could, can be used as reverse lights. Uh, this is all thin wall. It's only uh, one inch tubing. So there's not a lot of depth in this wall. I can go ahead and, and cut a pocket in the plywood and I can feed wires up to the top. That's not a problem and to where the outside porch lights can be. But uh, the timers are a little bit thicker, so I got to play with the depth once that's cut. What I like to do too is just use a standard box in there to uh, lay it out instead of just putting them into the ply. It's 12 volts, so it's not really a voltage issue. But uh, what I'm going to do is take this box. Obviously, it's quite a bit deeper than that, so I am going to cut it at depth. Uh, with a saw and hopefully get it so I can use it inside that plywood and basically just using the trim ring on this and then I'll put a standard outlook cover. I may need to bump it out uh, with an extension a little bit. We'll get to that as I figure it out. Uh, the timers that I, I bought, no connection with those whatsoever, but they are 60 minute timers. You can go longer, you can go shorter. Uh, prices change. Uh, one hour timers pretty much uh, a standard one so the prices are a little bit less. A quick word about the panel lights that we're using. These are 18 inches long. They typically are going to replace like a two tube T5 12 inch uh, fixture but will be about twice as bright. These are a cool white color, 6,000K. They're also available in a natural white, 4,500K. Uh, they do have removable end caps that come off so that you can access the uh, mounting holes. And so once the caps are back on, you can't see the screws that hold it up. It will, let's get a better look. I'm using actually nuts and bolts because I made the angled aluminum to put it up into the trailer, but it will come with wood screws and just pop the cap off. You can put it in with wood screws into a RV ceiling or wherever you need it. Put the caps back on, it's a real clean look. What I also did is on the ground wire, which is a white wire, I put a ring terminal on it so that because this is a metal frame trailer, uh, it'll just go on one of the screw holes and it'll be grounded. That way I only have to run power to the fixture and from the switch uh, grounded, just go through the chassis ground of the trailer. Just using a small self-tapping screw long enough uh, to go into the steel tubing, which is one inch steel tubing, but not too long so it doesn't go through the other side. You have to be very careful on these trailers. Uh, this is a one piece skin on this roof, so the last thing you want to do is penetrate the skin where you don't need to. I have these marked at 16 inches from the side. And I'm just going to go. Oh. There goes two. There's two to go. I'm not pre-drilling, I'm just using the self-drilling screws. Of course, I have to support these so that they don't drop in the aluminum, so hopefully I don't drop the last screw. that one. And I did leave the ground wire long. I could have cut that shorter if I chose to, but uh, it's just going behind the fixture anyway. 
And I've been keeping them consistent with the switches towards the front of the fixture. sharp up there or anything so it's fine. And one more screw. And it's really stiff up there. It's not going to go anywhere. The wire is going to have to go down the line and we'll hide it in a piece of uh, wire wrap and uh, clean it all up when it's done. Uh, the end caps simply go on with the two screws. And they just get snugged in there. Now there is also an onboard switch on this thing, so you can individually turn these off uh, after the wall switch is on. Okay, light switches in the trim ring. Basically on that box I showed you earlier, I cut off the back of it. So basically it's just a ring uh, to install three switches. It might have something like this, but this is stiffer. It's an inch and a quarter deep, whereas the cavity seems to be about an inch and a half. And uh, we'll drop it in. What I did is measure where I wanted it. And a bit harder the thing. I drew a line there. You gotta be very careful cutting so you don't hit the skin on the outside. And also I can tell from the outside that it's definitely soft there, that I'm deep enough and I'm not on the, uh, the upright here. Okay, hole is cut. Trimmering is cut, size to fit in there and the timer is just the right depth. If you can see that, it's right at an inch and a half. So no space are required on this on this one. And there's enough room in the back to get the wires up and down and secure them. So that'll be clean. All right, so installing the side porch light through the thin skinned uh, aluminum on the side of the, the uh, trailer. Uh, as with any of these projects, you got to kind of problem solve as you go along. If the trailer was built already for a side light, they would put a plate in there before they put the skin on. So I had to do a workaround on that. So this light will be going up here where the blue tape is. You got two holes for longer screws and you have one hole for the cord. So it'll sit right about there. To support it since if I screwed that in from the back it would just crush the uh, the skin and it would be all warped so I came up with this it's basically just a galvanized flange uh, cast and then a little piece of uh, plastic pipe in there I figured plastic would be better than steel rubbing against the aluminum skin on the outside eventually but that's exactly an inch and a half deep. And you'll see what I did there. Just screwed it in from the inside, used a hole saw to open it up. There's a hole that's on the outside. And then this one also will go in there. That'll prevent the outside from collapsing the skin and hold everything in place. Okay, so the rear docking lights are installed. Not wired, of course, yet. <coughs> Coming around to the porch light. And it's not punching in the tin at all. And again, on the inside installation, the flange bolts, <coughs> sorry, flange plates, and the screws work perfectly. 
right, fast forward. Wiring is complete. Uh, lights are all set. There is the interior lights. There is the timers. So this is for the interior top lights. This is for the side floodlight. This is for the rear uh, loading lights. And this will ultimately be tied into the reverse circuit with the diode. So it can be uh, activated with the standard RV reverse lights. Uh, the lighting is quite bright. I have some night pictures that will follow this. If you don't need that much light at times, you can individually turn off a couple of these as well. And just have your front set lights when you need them. But we like a lot of light. Going back to the installation, uh, the wiring for the back lights is through the black conduit up top. Just try to keep it real clean. Chassis grounds where needed. Wiring goes along the top structure around the beams and just kind of in there nicely. Uh, Use self-tapping screws on that just to hold it up. So that took a little bit more time than just screwing to the plywood, but it's worth the results. Again, these are the flanges that we use to mount the exterior light. The switch. The workbench, sorry, still a little messy because I'm still hanging the cabinets at the same time. And I did put a little work light here too for the bench. And that's it. Oh, one other thing, the battery will be in a battery box. There is a uh, fuse holder down here that will either go under the floor or in a battery box and cinch down right there. Or the little to cover up. All the wiring goes up the wall fish through. That front panel is actually about four inches deep and uh, a lot of planning on where the helmet rack and stuff we're going to go. Cabinets. And there's a little more e-track to put on the wall for a, a motorcycle tire that goes sideways, a dirt bike tire. So there you go, all the lights are in. There's the four panel lights, 18 inch panels. Here they are from the inside looking out, down the ramp door. That's with the loading lights on. A little hard because the uh, inside ones are overwhelming the video. So there's the loading lights alone and no lights whatsoever. Walking into the side door. There's a workbench light. We don't currently have that one, but may have it in the future. And the inside lights and the rotary switches. Finally, you're going to see the porch light on the side. And keep in mind, all these three types of lights and many more are available at m4led.com. Come check them out. If you have any questions on any of your projects, just let me know.